is 1 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1, verses 1 to 14. Go to page 441. <coughs> Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count the Israelites from Bathsheba to Dan. Then report back to me, so that I may know how many there are. So Joab replied, May the Lord multiply his troops a hundred times over. My lord the king, are they not all my lord's subjects? Why does my lord want to do this? Why should he bring the guilt on Israel? The king's word, however, overruled Joab. So Joab left and went throughout Israel, and then came back to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of the fighting men to David. In all Israel, there were 1,100,000 men who could handle the sword, including 470,000 in Judea. But Joab did not include Levi and Benjamin in the number because the king's command was repulsive to them. This command was also evil in the sight of God. So he punished Israel. Then David said to God, I have sinned greatly by doing this. Now I beg you, take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. The Lord said to Gad, David's seer, Go and tell David this is what the Lord says. I am giving you three options. Choose one of them for me to carry out against you. So Gad went to David and said to him, this is what the Lord says. Take your choice of three years of famine, three months of being swept away before your enemies with their swords and overtaking you, or three days of the sword of the Lord, days of plague in the land, with the angel of the Lord ravaging every part of Israel. Now then, decide how I should answer the one you sent me. David said to Gad, I am indeed distressed. Let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. But do not let me fall into the hands of men. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel, and 70,000 men of Israel fell dead. And the second reading is found on page 1093, Luke 14, chapters, or <laughs> Luke chapter. 14 verses 15 to 23. When one of those at the table with him heard this, and he said to Jesus, Blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. And Jesus replied, <coughs> A certain man was preparing a great banquet, invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they, all alike, began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house, house became angry and ordered his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, What you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and the country lanes and make them come in so that my house will be full. The response of reading is found on page 634, Psalms 105, 12 to 21.
Do not touch my joints once. Do my prophets no harm. He called down famine on the land and destroyed all their supplies of food. And he sent a man before them. Joseph sold as a slave. He bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons. Till what he foretold came to pass. Till the word of the Lord proved to be true. The king sent and released him. The ruler of peoples set him free. He made him master of his household and ruler over all he possessed. Or lonely or frustrated. 
And so the challenge for us in the wealthy West, if you want to get the next slide, Lyle, is to learn how to trust God. Because think about it. If you were pioneers, there was no way you'd go, hmm, before refrigeration and everything, there's no way you would go, oh, yeah, I think I'm just going to accidentally eat. Matthew, you've been out to Survivor Camp. Aurora, you've been to Survivor Camp. You can't just go, oh, I'm thinking I'm going to start making a sandwich, right? It takes too much time to prepare. And so for us in our wealthy Western world, it means that we need to actually concentrate more than maybe our ancestors. When David was hiding in the caves of Adullam, he had little choice but to trust in the Lord. He had no other options. But once he became king, he had other problems. If you want to hit the first... Oh, wait, no, loud space bar. Oh, you're there. I'm going to try something. Look, no, I got the mouse. I think I can do it from here with the mouse. I'm a new toy. Anyway, I'm so excited. Yeah, I know the new computer, new toys, it's unbelievable. Okay, new dogs. All right. Now you've distracted me. What were you talking about? Oh, yeah. We, it's tempting to trust in what we see and understand and can touch and feel. So I feel like eating. So David's being surrounded by other armies, and he goes, let's count the troops and see where we're at. And, and Joab, his general commander, said, no, nah, let's not do that. Why should we bring in some guilt on Israel? But David overruled him, and he did it anyway. Now, there's nothing immoral about counting people. The issue is that David was putting his faith in his own resources rather than God. Psalm 27 and 8 puts it. Some trust in the chariots and the horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. The collapse and fall will rise and stand, but they will collapse and fall. We will rise up and stand firm. Get the slide line. Oh, no, that's my Sorry, I'm just like a carol. <laughs> Trusting in God's promises will help us stay faithful. And if we choose to do it, develop the habit of do it, doing it, it will help us become more faithful. And it's not just going to happen easily because it's too easy for us to depend upon other things in our West, West, wealthy Western world. <laughs> And so what happens? Well, Gad comes along and tells David to sin, and so you got three choices. Do you want the, uh, there to be a famine for three years? For three months, do you want the uh, enemies to be able to defeat you? Or for three days, you'll have a plague from the Lord. And David, interestingly, chooses to trust God because he said, I'd rather be in the hands of God than man. Than human beings. So the Lord sent a plague and says 70,000 people of Israel fell dead. So David thought it would be better to trust in God. And the sin of David is that he was trusting more in his own resources. And for us as human beings, what is we read and we, what we read, what we sang in the song there with the children was, we as human beings do not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so while we Canadians are not likely to trust in our military, because our military is near as good as our neighbors to the south, we will trust in other things. And so we have the New Testament stories. And in our New Testament lesson, there's a parable about people who are being distracted from going to this banquet. 